Are you ignoring the customers who want hardbacks? Find out on today's episode. Today's episode is brought to you by ConvertKit. Your email list is your greatest asset. Put your business in the only hands that I trust at servedmaster.com front slash ConvertKit. Are you tired of dealing with your boss? Do you feel underpaid and underappreciated? If you want to make it online, fire your boss and start living your retirement dreams now. Then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Serve No Master Podcast, where you'll learn how to open new revenue streams and make money while you sleep. Presented live from a tropical island in the South Pacific by best-selling author, Jonathan Green. Now, here's your host. I had a conversation earlier this week with an author I very much respect, where I mentioned that I'm dabbling with hardbacks. I'm moving into the space where I want to offer another format for my books for people who want that format. And he sells thousands of books a day. And he said, I've never even thought about it. And I said, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. You're leaving a lot of opportunity on the table. You're leaving a lot of customers on the table. So let's start with understanding the hardback world. The main reason people don't sell hardbacks is because CreateSpace and Amazon don't do it. If you want to sell hardbacks, you have to go through another website. You can't just use Amazon and click make another format to print hardback books. You have to go a different route. And the main two platforms to use are Ingram Spark and Lulu. They're the two places that print. Now you can go to other places, other companies, and there are dozens of them. Most of them just resell Ingram's products. That's why I don't mention the competitors. Almost anyone you name, if you look at the fine print, you'll find out all they do is prep or typeset your book and then they send it to Ingram and they take a taste for being in the middle. What a waste of your money. Uploading a book to another platform can see a little bit overwhelming. So it's the technical aspect. We go, oh, I don't know if people want it. I don't know this process because I can tell you this. Doing my first book with Ingram, it's really annoying to figure it out. You have to do all these percentages. They really are a distributor. And so you have to look at distributor math. And I got into a fight with one of their chat reps because it didn't make sense. What they said I'd make per book when I filled out the survey before I joined the website was different than what they showed me afterwards. And I actually think this is a little bit dishonest. I'll call them out on this. Your calculator should be the same for before and after people join. She goes, oh, well, that calculator doesn't include distributor fees. And I said, why wouldn't it? How dare you? If you're going to charge me one price inside, one side, outside membership, that's a little a little not cool in my book. So I'm going to be honest about that. The price is actually 30% more than what they said. They said, oh, well, we also have an additional fee. And then Amazon has an additional fee and you sell a book for them. And I said, why wouldn't you tell me that before I started going down this path? For printing my hardback, I want to do a hardback edition of Serve No Master. And the book is 422 pages long in six by nine inch format. Now with a hardback book, there are two different sizes. You can do six inches by nine or a little bit bigger for what you're more used to seeing as a hardback in a bookstore. Now, when I went to print the larger size, it didn't offer distribution on Amazon. For So for some reason, if you do the larger size of the Ingram, you can't do it on Amazon. But I went through the pre-formatting process and I got two prices. For Lulu, it said, oh, it's going to cost $21.50 to print a copy of your book for each copy. Ingram for the same book said it'll cost $11. So I said, well, that's what I'm going to go with. I'd love to be able to lower my prices. Now, then I discovered it was a little bit misleading and the real cost is closer to $17 or $18. So it's not that big of a difference because they give part of the money away from the purchase price of the book, they pay 30% to Amazon off every sale, up to 55%. You get to choose. I said, put the lowest. Give me the lowest. Now, if I sell my own stuff through Amazon, they charge a 30% fee anyways. So you get banged with that fee no matter what. And that's a normal distribution fee. There's really no way to avoid having to pay these Amazon fees. So I was able to create my first hardback book. I had to redesign the cover a little bit. That took me about an hour just had to resize it and use their formatting tool their way they want the cover design sent to them. And because a hardback cover, the size is a little different than a paperback cover because it's thicker. The interior is the exact same interior file for both books because the page sizes is the same. So the process wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. There were a couple of starts and stops. The other challenge to the hurdle is in the world of the ISBN. ISBN is your library number. To sell a book, you have to have an ISBN. If you want to sell a book from Ingram on Amazon, you have to have an ISBN. Now you can buy an ISBN from Ingram for $85. You can go to the official only company in the world allowed to sell ISBNs. It's called Bowker. They have a website called myidentifiers.com and they charge you, I think, $99 for your first one. Then if you want to buy 10, I think it's $175 or $275. 
If you want to buy 100 ISBNs, it's 575. And I'll have to buy another pack soon. It's a big investment. It's very expensive. And this is the other reason people hesitate. So the cost to launch a book on Ingram can be prohibitive. You have to buy an ISBN. That's 85 to to $100 if you're just buying one by one. It does make sense to buy a pack. But if it's your first book, you're going, well, I don't know if I'm going to do 10 books. I don't know if I'm going to do 11 books. I need to do more. Where's the value for me? The second thing is that Ingram charges you $49 to put your book together. They charge a typesetting fee or whatever they want to call it. The good news is I found a coupon that I use to eliminate that $49 fee. And for my test printing, I'm not using an ISBN because I don't want distribution. It's just a test printing to see how the book looks at. Like, and I shipped one out this week to one of my followers who's going to take a bunch of pictures for me. Let me know how it looks. If it's all good, then I'll buy some ISBNs. I'll sign an ISBN to this book and then I'll add it to Amazon and you'll see a new format soon. But this extra layer of complexity that I've just described to you is what holds a lot of authors back from entering into the hardback space. But let's think about if it's worth it. Now we've talked a little about the difficulty. Is it worth the effort? Is it worth the process? Is it worth the time and the money? There are people out there, there are customers who only like to read hardback books. I know several people like this. For a long time, my father was this way. He would never buy a paperback book from a bookstore. He likes to read in bed, sitting up with a couple big pillows behind him. And he likes being able to hold on to that hardback. Now he's since shifted and become a Kindle guy just like me. But for most of my life, he was hardback only. And there are people who like hardbacks for posterity, who like hardbacks for how it feels in their hand, for the durability. Hardback makes a lot of sense for libraries because they last longer. And the cool thing about Ingram is that you can do different types of hardbacks. You can do like a leather or a cloth or even what I did is like a plastic type cover. or They call it case laminate where you have a design that's built into it as opposed to a dust jacket. I'm not a big fan of cloth with a dust jacket because you always end up losing the dust jacket anyways. And it's just, I don't need to look like it's an 1800s book. It's cool for posterity, but... I'm starting off with a case laminate idea. There are people that want that type of book. Additionally, even if you never sell one, even if I never sell a hardback book, when I look on Amazon, the more formats a book has, the more I respect it. If I see a book and it says ebook only, and then it says $12.99, no Kindle Limited, I go, no way. I'm going to pay too much for an author who's not any good, who's not with a real publisher, who's not even good enough to have other editions. I almost never buy a Kindle only book. I would never pay for it. If it's Kindle only and I don't notice it because I'm buying it from my Kindle and I'm doing a Kindle limited thing, then I might acquire it that way, but I'll never actually pay money for it because I don't think it's worth any money. That's just how perception works. And you probably feel the same way. Most customers feel the same way. But when we see a book and we see that it's got a paperback format, we go, okay, all right, there's a little bit going on here. It might be an okay book. When we see an audiobook version, we go, okay, this is a real book. Something going on here. It's worth giving it a check. I'll respect it. When we also see a hardback version and then we see MP3 CD version, we start to really think this is someone with a major publishing house. It changes perception. It changes the value of the book and it also changes the price. So for me to sell a hardback, it's going to cost $24.99 because of the length of the book. It's so thick, the cost of printing and everything, anything below that price point is no profit. I can't sell it at $19.99. It'll lose money with shipping and everything. At $24.99, I make about $6 a sale at the end of the day. And if I have my paperback at $19.99, and again, I can't lower the paperback to $14.99. I wish I could because it's too long. This is why I'm moving to a little bit shorter books so I can lower the price point on future books. When people see my book on Amazon, they see the price right now. It says $19.99 with a slash through it, free on Kindle Unlimited. Now it's going to have $24.99 with a slash through it because they always show for the price drop, the most expensive to the least expensive. And will also increase the perceived value of the paperback. Like, oh, wow, I'm saving five bucks just by going paperback. That's cool. We want to add authority, add perceived value. So we make more sales. So not only do we give the hardback customers what they want, we also give the other customers what they want, which is a justification for the purchase. They feel more comfortable spending the money because they feel like it's a real product and you know what you're doing. All of these are very good things to do. I'm in the business of selling books and so are you. If you're listening to this episode, if you're thinking about being an author, if you're thinking about being a writer, if you've got a book you want to sell, adding in additional formats is a smart way to increase your revenue. Now, the other reason I like to be on multiple formats is that there are people who only enjoy specific formats. There are people who only do audiobook, people who only do ebook, people who only do Kindle Unlimited, people who only do paperback. And I want to reach each of them. I'm trying to reach a wider audience. There are people who will only buy a hardback. They won't buy a paperback. They go, oh, it doesn't interest me. 
It's not, I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not a paperback guy. I'm a hardback guy. And now I can start to reach that audience. So when you're thinking about expanding your distribution, you're thinking about doing other platforms, when you're thinking about ways that you can diversify your income stream without spending a lot of money, this is a great one. So the total cost for me up front for launching a hardback version of my book is the cost in time. It costs me about an hour to format the new cover and go through the entire process of designing the book and answering all their questions and copying and pasting all the information. And that includes the time I spent fighting with their chat rep, trying to figure out why I'm not making $14 a book instead of six. The other cost is the price of a test printing. Now, I don't know why, but everyone in print on demand that I deal with always wants to bang me on the shipping. So they give you these choices. And the first choice is for shipping your book. For your test printing, the test printing is like $11, $12. And then they go, oh, well, the shipping is going to make four bucks. So it's around, seven, I think, $16 or $17 I spent to get the book shipped to me. But they try and get you to pay for all these additional upsells that I always avoid because it just feels like a sucker's game. They go, oh, do you want to get it printed three days instead of five? It's an extra 10 bucks or an extra four bucks. I forget exactly what it was, but it was a little bump. And then they go to the shipping and shipping, they have about 10 shipping options that after you go past the basic low level, they make it look like it's dirt shipping as though it's going to come with a bullet hole through it. It starts at $17 and goes up to $200. You pay $200 to get like overnight shipping five days after it's printed. It's absolutely ridiculous because I was looking at, well, what if I just get a thousand of these made? And the money you save on the cost of printing for getting a thousand, you immediately lose on the cost of shipping. To ship a thousand books was like at the lowest level was like three or four hundred dollars. Now, again, it's a hardback, so it's heavy, but I don't think the shipping should be twenty dollars. That seems a little ridiculous to me. And it just seems like a fool's game to kind of get invested in that. Shipping is always where you run into trouble and complexity. And that's why I'm only gonna sell hardbacks directly through Amazon. I could sell hardbacks directly through my website and say, hey, you want the hardback edition of Serving the Master? You can send me the, the full fee. I don't have to share any money with Amazon. And now I do make like $12 or $13 per sale instead of 6 But then I have to go into the Ingram thing and place the order manually and go through that whole process. What a nightmare. I think part of the reason they make it hard is for all of that stuff. Now, when you ship through Amazon, and when I sell you the book through Amazon, they handle all the shipping stuff and the packaging. I don't have to worry about that because, you know, Amazon is great at packaging. All of these little worries that we have that it's so hard to do hardbacks, that there's so much complexity I've always felt that way. I've been doing big stuff on Amazon for three or four years now, and only this week did I start playing around with hardbacks. And it was because one of my consulting clients told me that she was thinking about printing her book through Lulu. And so I looked at Lulu and I thought, oh, I've never heard about Ingram. And it turns out, I didn't even know this, I already had an account with Ingram. I'd never done anything, but I had created a login years ago. I'm excited to see how this plays out. I have a good feeling about it, that it will look nice and that everything will be good because Ingram has a good reputation. And I'm going to do more things. I may use Lulu for some other printing things I'm going to do. So I'm not hating on them. It was just for this particular project, the right decision was Ingram. For the next project, Lulu might be a better price point. It also helps to get paid by different people to have money coming in from different places. So I have money coming in from CreateSpace, Kindle, ACX. So I get paid three different ways for books. And now I'm going to get paid by Ingram whenever I sell hardbacks. It opens up this additional revenue stream. It doesn't have to be hard. It's also... It's often based on assumptions. We talked on the previous episode about friendships. Sometimes we have bad information, we have bad assumptions. This is a classic example of that. This is a classic example of us thinking it's going to be so hard. I've heard so many people tell horror stories about the complexity of Ingram on forums and different places. I've looked, I thought it'd be super hard. Turns out it's not. If this experiment goes well and I have strong feeling it will, I will add a hardback version of all my books. It's one of the first things I'll do. Diversifying your product offerings. We talked about that a few episodes ago means offering different products, but offer different ways of engaging and consuming your different products. Some people want an audiobook, some want a digital book, some want paperback, and now some who want a hardback can also get it. I'm also looking at the idea of a spiral bound. That's what I'll look at next. I'll probably do Lulu for spiral bound. That's what I'm thinking about. And that's more of what I'll do for journals. I've looked at whether I should do like a leather bound journal or a spiral bound type journal. And I'm really looking at the cost comparison and the value for my customers and what's the best thing to give people. So that's the next experiment that I have going on in my mind. So I'm always looking for new ways to experiment. Hardbacks, I think, is a great area to enter into because you don't have to do anything special. I don't even have to reformat my books. The hardback and the paperback are the same size pages. 
so I can send the exact same file. I can't wait to see exactly how it turns out to see how this experiment plays out. And I can't wait to share hardback books with you. And you should do the same thing with your audience. Don't let hesitation hold you back. Don't leave money on the table and don't fail to give your audience exactly what they want. Give them the hardbacks they've been dreaming of. As usual, even at four in the morning, people outside think it's okay to shout. I don't know if you heard a little bit of that background noise, but even at four in the morning, people like to come outside and shout around here sometimes. Give you a little bit of that island color. Don't hesitate to give people what they want. If people want hardbacks, give it to them. There's no upfront costs, so now there's no reason to leave that money on the table. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Serve No Master. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. We'll be back next Tuesday with more tips and tactics on how to escape that rat race. Head over to servenomaster.com forward slash podcasts now for your chance to win a free copy of Jonathan's bestseller, Serve No Master. All you have to do is leave a five-star review of this podcast. See you Tuesday. Networking is critical to growing any business. Earn your black belt with my free training at servemaster.com front slash black belt.